good day. So now let's go measures of variability or dispersion. So this measure will tell us whether your data are homogeneous, meaning they are close to each other, or heterogeneous, meaning they are far from each other. Okay, we will be talking about these measures of variability or dispersion. First, the range, the mean deviation, the standard deviation, and the variance. Now, let's start first with the ungrouped data. For the range, it is just the difference between the maximum and the minimum values of the data set. So, all you need to do is to find the highest value or maximum value. So, for example, number 1, the highest value is 16, and the lowest value is... So just take the difference. 16 minus 2 is 14. For number 2, of course, the highest is 96. And then the lowest is 64. So take the difference. So it's equal to 32. So for the range, again, you will just consider the maximum and the minimum values only. Next is the mean deviation. The mean deviation or average deviation is the average of absolute differences between each value of the data set and the mean. So that is why we have absolute value symbol. And this x sub i is our data, or our data, and x bar is our mean. Okay? So example... We have this. Example, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. To solve for the mean deviation, we need to compute first for the mean. So this one. So for the mean, we have add the data and then divide by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So according to the definition, it's the differences between the data and the mean. So we'll have this absolute value. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. But the absolute value of negative 2 is just 2. When we talk about absolute value of an integer inside or a number inside, it makes the overall value positive. Next data is 2. 2 minus 3. 3 is our mean. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Next, we have 3. 3 minus 3, 0. So the absolute value of 0 is still 0. Next, we have 4 minus 3. The absolute value of 4 minus 3 is absolute value of 1. So we have 1. Next, for 5, we have absolute value of 5 minus 3, which is 2. So the absolute value of 2 is 2. The next thing to do is to add this column. We have 2 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 2, which is 6. So therefore, the median or mean deviation, I mean, is just... 6 divided by 5 because we have 5 number of data. So 6 divided by 5 is 1.2. Okay, another example. We have this data. So there are 9 data set. So 92 divided by 9, we have 10.22. So again, it's a mean, so please do not always use whole numbers. So we have an agreement that we will use two, up to two decimal places. So this time I will have 10.22. So these are your data, or these are the data, and then we'll have the absolute differences. So 4 minus 10.22, we have this, and then take the absolute value, we have positive 6.22. For 9, we have this. So do the process similarly. Uh, take the differences from the data. The data minus the mean okay and take the absolute value and then please always remember that this is always positive so if we add this column this is equal to 29.78 so 29.78 divided by 9 which is the number of data which is equal to 3.31 okay so if you notice the first uh, MD is small, which is 1.2, because if we can see that this data is more closer to each other than this data. Okay. 
Now let's go to the standard deviation. So it measures the spread of the data about the mean value. So again, we'll be using again the mean. You need the mean. The lower the value, meaning they are close to each other. So meaning they are more homogeneous. But if the value of the standard deviation is high, then of course they are far from each other. Say for example, the standard deviation for A, group A is say for example 3.5. And the standard deviation of B is 6. So which is more dispersed? So this one is more dispersed because it's big. They are, they are more scattered. Okay? So this one, they are more close to each other because the value is small. Okay? Again, the lower the value, they are more close to each other. So this is the formula. It's the square root of this expression. Again, x, x sub i are the data. x bar is our sample mean. And n is the number of data. Sample size. So going back with this, the same set of data. So the mean is 3. So in this case, we need the difference, not the absolute difference, but only the difference, and then take the square. So we have this, take the difference, 1 minus 3, 2 minus 3, 3 minus 3, 4 minus 3, 5 minus 3. And then we need the square, so square this one. This is 4 because it's negative 2 squared. This is negative 1 squared. So the negative is inside the parenthesis. 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. So please take note that in this particular column, the result is always positive. It's always positive because when you square an integer, positive or negative, the result is always positive. Okay, so adding this, we have 10. So substitute. So the sum, the numerator is now 10. And the denominator is n minus 1. So 5 minus 1 is 4. Okay, and take the square root, we'll, have, we'll get 1.58. Okay, we'll go back again to our previous example 2. We have this, 10.22 as our mean. And again, this time, we'll just take the difference, not the absolute difference, but the difference. So we have 4 minus 10.22, 9 minus 10.22, 11 minus 10.22, and so on. Okay, so we have this value. And then take the square and round off to two decimal places. So we have this. So negative 6.22 square is positive 38.69. Again, it's negative 6.22. 22. It's negative. So the negative side in, sign is inside the parenthesis. So that is why it's positive. So doing this similarly to all rows and then add, we have we have 139.57. Substituting to our formula, we have 139.57 divided by 8 because it's 9 minus 1. So 9 minus 1 is 8. And take the square root, we have 4.18. Okay. Now if you compare, the example 1 is 1.58, example 2 is 4.18, meaning these data are again closer to each other. Same with the result of uh, during the mean, I mean deviation. Okay, last is the variance. So for the variance, it is just the square of the Standard deviation. Okay, so uh, this is not the one. It is the square of the standard deviation. So it is denoted by S squared. So from the previous example, we have S is 1.58. So take the square. So we will get the variance, sample variance as 2.50. And for uh, number two, the second problem, the variance is, or sample variance is 17.47. So on the other hand, if you're given with the variance, if you're given with this one, to get the standard deviation, you'll just take this positive square root. So meaning square root of 2.5 is approximately 1.58. And square root of 
uh, 17.47 is approximately 4.18. Okay, now let's go to the group data. So we have the mean deviation. Okay, so this is the formula for the mean deviation. We need the mean this one, the x-bar, we need the data, x-i, and the frequency. x-i actually is our class marks. Okay? And f sub i is our uh, number of data, or the frequency of each interval. Okay, so this is our solution in the, you know, from our previous slide, so the mean is 19.75. So take the absolute, take note when you talk about median, it's still it involves a uh, median mean deviation it involves the absolute differences so that is why again we're back with absolute value okay and take the difference okay and when we talk about absolute it's still positive the result is positive look at this so seven the class marks so first i'll be computing this first the xi minus class marks so seven minus 19 we have this so positive 12.75 if we take the absolute value. Next, 12 minus 19.75. We have this, 17 minus 19.75, and so on. Okay, now we have the absolute value of x minus x bar. We have this column. But we need the product of the frequency and the absolute differences. So for the last column, you'll just have to multiply the frequency, the co uh, respective frequency of this corresponding uh, absolute differences. So in this case, for the first one, we have 1 times 12.75. Next, we have 4 times 7.75. Next, we have 6 times 2.75. 4 times 2.25. 2 times 7.25 and 3 times 12.25 and then add so in this case we have 120.5 and then for this denominator summation of fi is just the total number of data so we have now 120.5 divided by 20 which is equal to 6.03 so this is now our mean deviation. Okay, another example. So again, we'll be needing the mean. So compute for the mean. And then the frequency and the class marks. So let, after computing for the mean, you compute for the absolute differences. So the class mark, 52 minus 67. You have 57 minus 67. 62 minus 67, 67 minus 67, 72 minus 67, 77 minus 67. And please do not forget to take the absolute value because it's absolute differences. So we have this, 15, 10, 5, 0, 5, 10. Next is multiply the frequency and its corresponding absolute difference. So 2 times 15, we have this. 4 times 10, we have this, 5 times 5, 25, 10 times 0 is 0, 9 times 5, 45, 5 times 10 is 50. Okay, so we need this now to, we need this for our formula, so add, so 190, 190 divided by 35 is equal to 5.43. Okay, now let's go to the standard deviation and variance. Okay, for the standard deviation, so we do not need the absolute differences, we only need the differences. And then after taking the differences, we will square each differences. Okay. So let's start first, compute for the mean, which is 19.75. Next, compute the differences. 
not the absolute differences but the differences only use the class mark and the mean so 7 minus 19.75 we have negative 12.75 12 minus 19.75 we have negative 7.75 and so on okay you use the class marks and the mean next is you take the square you square each differences so again it's squaring the differences so it will be positive negative 12.75 square or square is 162.56 negative 7.75 is 60.06 .06. negative 2.75 square is 7.56 2.25 square is 5.06 7.25 square is 52.56 and 12.25 square is 150.06 okay so after that you multiply the frequency and its corresponding square of the difference so 1 times 162.56 here it is next 4 times 60.06 here it is next 6 times 7.56 4 times 5.06 2 times 52.56 and last 3 times 150.06 so we have these values and then add we'll get 100 uh, 1023.7 so this is now our numerator then divided by 19 because 20 minus 1 is 19 and taking the square root, square root will have, or will get 7.34. Again, if you square that one, you'll get the variance, which is equal to 53.88. Last example. So, compute first for the differences. Uh, first is the mean again uh, again compute for the mean so we have we have this 67 so from our previous example next is compute the differences 52 minus 67 57 minus 67 62 minus 67 and so on so you'll get this number on the next column it says you need to square this one so square negative 15 square is 2 to 5 Negative 10 square is 100. Negative 5 square is 25. 0 square is 0. 5 square is 25. 10 square is 100. And then you multiply these two columns. So 2 times 225, we have 450. 4 times 100, we have 400. 5 times 25 is 125. 10 times 0 is 0. 9 times 25 is 225. And 5 times 100 is 500 so adding this will arrive with 1700 so this is now our numerator and then divide by n minus 1 which is 35 minus 1 is 34 and then take the square root you will get 7.07 .07. if you square you'll get the variance as 50 so the variance is 50 Okay, now comparing these two data sets, so 7.07 .07 compared to 7.34, so this second one is more closer to each other because it's 7.07 .07 compared to 7.34, although it's just a point something difference. Okay, thank you for listening.